Hello, boys and girls. Uh, today we're going to be going over the causes of the War of 1812. I know it says causes and effects, but it is just causes for this video lesson. You will need that page number three in front of you. If for whatever reason you don't have it in front of you, you can easily just grab a lined piece of paper or a white piece of paper and make it happen. Draw it out. Okay, guys, not a problem. So go ahead and press pause. And when you're ready, we'll press play and we'll move on. So let's do a quick review. We've been talking about the early republic. This is a time period of our first couple of presidents and the different um, obstacles and adversities, the domestic issues and foreign issues that they were dealing with. One of the main issues that Washington was dealing with was the issue between France and Britain. France and Britain were at war and they wanted us to pick a side. When Washington was president, he set the, his foreign policy. He said he decided to go with new, the neutrality proclamation. He said, hey, we're not going to be choosing sides. We're going to continue our commercial trade, but we're not going to be making any permanent foreign alliances. And so because of that, every president after that tried their best to respect the neutrality proclamation. Even though England and France had started blocking our U.S. trading ships, right, which was disrupting our trade. We were trying hard to stay neutral. When Jefferson became president, he said, you know what? If they're going to be doing that, then I'm going to ban all trade with all foreign countries. This was known as the Embargo Act, all right? And so he decided to ban all foreign trade. This, of course, damaged the commercial shipping industry because that was their main job. Later, he changed it so that we were just not trading with France and Britain. Uh, and so because of that, those were ways that the presidents were trying to uphold and, and honor that neutrality proclamation. So here's another picture to showcase how the United States was d not trading with France and Britain. So let's get started with today's lesson, all right? We're going to make sure that we answer this question. What were the causes of the War of 1812? And we're going to be discussing three. And uh, what finally caused America to stop this foreign policy of neutrality and declare war on Britain, which became known as the War of 1812? So our fourth president is James Madison. And he has been watching as all of this has been transpiring, as all of this has been happening. Washington declaring the neutrality proclamation, uh, Jefferson doing the Embargo Act, Britain and France still blocking our U.S. trading ships. And all the while, he is trying to stay neutral. So what caused Madison to finally declare war against Britain? So... We know that the very first cause, and I need you to do this with me, is the blocking of the U.S. trading ships, which is disrupting our trade, not allowing us to trade with other countries. That's our first cause. The first reason why we ended up going to war is because they continuously blocked our U.S. trading ships. So here you have a picture of the British ship, our American ship, and how they're blocking it and not allowing it to, to trade with other foreign countries. So on our graphic organizer, right now you're going to press pause and you're going to write that down on the top left-hand corner. The second cause is the impressment of U.S. sailors. Impressment means basically kidnapping boys and girls. So this is what they're doing. Once they block that U.S. ship, then they basically like rob it. They stop it, they go on board, and they rob it of its sailors. They take American sailors and kidnap them and put them in their ship to work for them. That is impressment when you're kept kidnapping them and forcing them into service. And so Britain started doing this. So cause number one, uh, blocking of U.S. trading ships. Cause number two, impressment. Look, I'm getting that sailor. Impressment of U.S. sailors. So you're basically kidnapping them and forcing them to work for you. So again, I need everybody to do this. Cause number one, block of U.S. Uh, trading ships, which is a disruption in trade. Cause number two, impressment of u.s sailors notice how they're going on board to to impress them 
go ahead and write this out. Here's a star question. If we look at it, it has a little graphic organizer and it says cause, question mark, effect, the War of 1812. Which action completes this graphic organizer? Is it A, French and naval attacks on U.S. harbors? B, British invasions of countries allied with the United States? C, French embargoes on trade with the United States? D, British impressments of U.S. sailors? Go ahead and answer this question. We should have all answered D, British impressment of U.S. sailors. That is one of the causes. If on here we had blocking of U.S. trading ships or disruption of trade, those would have been answers as well. So the disruption of trade, the impressment of U.S. sailors, those are causes of the War of 1812. What is the last cause? What, do I, what am I doing there in that little gif or jif? It's finger guns. <laughs> finger guns. So here's the last cause, boys and girls. The British, if we recall, the British have land on top of the Great Lakes area, which is north of the United States. The only thing that borders us that acts as a boundary are the Great Lakes. And what the British are doing is they're giving guns to the Native Americans that live all along that area and then kind of encouraging them to use them against our Americans. So the British gave guns to the Native Americans. That is our third cause. Here you see a picture. Here is Britain, America, and here are the Great Lakes. And later you'll see this is where most of the battles take place. So go ahead and press pause as you write that down. So let's do a quick review over the causes of the War of 1812. Cause number one, disruption of U.S. trade, meaning they're not allowing us, they're blocking our U.S. trading ships. And because they're doing that, there's a decline in that foreign trade. Cause number two, after they block our U.S. trade, they impress or kidnap our sailors and force them to work for them. That's what I'm doing. I'm grabbing a little sailor, putting him on a British ship. So, disruption of U.S. trade, impressment of U.S. sailors. And the last thing, the British are giving guns to the Native Americans and encouraging them to use it against Americans. Those are our three causes of the War of 1812. Check out this question. It says, on the left-hand side, it says, British support of American Indians in the Northwest Territory. Then if you fur go further down, British impressment of American sailors. I hope you guys are seeing what I'm doing. The first box is basically showing this. And the second box is showing this. And then they're tell, asking you what happened because of this and because of this. And then they tell you, and then the Treaty of Ghent. So which of the following best completes the diagram above? Is it A, the Boston Tea Party? B, the War of 1812, C, American Revolution, or D, Civil War? Go ahead and take your time and answer this question. We should have all answered B, the War of 1812. The left-hand side, these are your causes, causes of the War of 1812. And then because of that, we went to war. So there are some important battles and events that happen. You don't necessarily need to know all of them, but just to let you know that one of the, an important battle is the Battle of Lake Erie, which is one of the Great Lakes, right? One of those Great Lakes that borders uh, Britain and the United States. You also need to know that this is the time when the Star Spangled Banner is created, originally a poem, and it makes us very patriotic, meaning we love our country. Uh, during this time, Britain also goes and burns our White House down. The wife of James Madison, her name is uh, Dolly Madison, she actually becomes famous because she's brave enough to stay behind and have someone help her take down George Washington's portrait when he was president, roll it up, save it, and then get out of there. And because of her, we still have it in today's White House because she was able to save it 
because the rest of the White House was burned. After that, we finally signed the Treaty of Ghent. And you're probably wondering, who won? Boys and girls, nobody won. At the end of it, they realized, what are we fighting for? If I win, if, if uh, America wins, what are they going to win, right? They're not fighting for land. If Britain wins, what are they going to win? They're not fighting for land. They were just basically picking a fight with each other. So the Treaty of Ghent basically says there's no clear winner. Nobody wins this war. Even though America really thinks, America really thinks that they won the war because they were able to defend themselves against Britain. Another thing that happens, because communication is so so slow during that time, they couldn't like open up a cell phone and see, oh, the war has ended, right? So a famous person who we're later going to learn about, Andrew Jackson, famously wins the Battle of New Orleans. But notice, the Battle of New Orleans is south. The Great Lakes are up here. But the fighting was taking up mostly in the Great Lakes, but then it moved down slowly. So because of the slow communication, even though we signed the Treaty of Ghent and the war was over, uh, Jackson was still fighting in the south, and he basically technically wins the last battle of the War of 1812. So America this whole time always says, well, America won because we won the last battle. Uh, but there's really no clear winner, boys and girls. So here's a star question on the Star Spangled Banner. The first box says Francis Scott Key wrote a poem titled The Defense of Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. This poem was combined, they put it together with music and it became known as a popular song, The Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner was adopted as the national anthem of the United States in 1931. What is one reason this song has endured, has lasted for so many years? Is it A, the song was inspired by religious revivals? Is it B, the song celebrates a patriotic act from the past? Or C, the song is about protecting the rights of people? Or finally, letter D, the song was a theme for civil rights activism. Go ahead and take your time answering this question. So the answer to this question is B, the song celebrates a patriotic uh, act from the past. So just a quick overview on the causes of the War of 1812. Boys and girls, this is so simple. All you got to know is that Britain was disrupting our U.S. trade, not allowing us to trade with other countries. Then they were impressing, kidnapping our U.S. sailors and forcing them to work for them. And finally, they were giving guns to the Native Americans in that Great Lake region. These are the causes of the War of 1812. So make sure that we make... So make sure that we learn these gestures, boys and girls, because it makes it a lot easier to remember the information. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you on the next one, which is the effects of the War of 1812.